Chapter 6 Staying Cool Under Pressure How to Avoid Provocation AE Strategy 2 Sidestep Provocations It might seem weak or cowardly to avoid a confrontation. Although facing challenges directly can be advantageous, there are times when addressing the personal situation that has sparked your anger offers little benefit. Unresolved frustration can harm both your relationships and your well-being. But in the long run, it might be wiser to steer clear of certain individuals until you've honed your skills in managing conflicts. If you seek a happier life, sometimes it's best to hold off on addressing issues without proper preparation and reflection. We suggest using avoidance or escape as a practical first step to alleviate anger. It, choosing your battles. What troublesome people or situations deserve your attention? When should you confront someone who's difficult? How can you navigate challenging circumstances? Answering these three questions can help you alleviate frustration and lead to a more content life. Consider what issues truly matter. Is it worth addressing every annoyance? Should you confront a cab driver about their behavior? Do you need to engage with a slow salesperson? Is it necessary to speak out against someone who cuts in line? Ask yourself whether allowing anger to dictate your actions will yield any positive results. Sometimes if resolving a problem won't result in lasting change, or if you won't encounter the person again, walking away can be the smarter choice. Eh, timing your confrontation. Is it advisable to address a problem while you're still angry? Many people feel the urge to react impulsively in these situations. The best time to handle a potentially volatile situation varies with the circumstances. What's the most effective way to approach someone about a conflict? Imagining a conversation that fosters change can be empowering. But sometimes the best strategy may simply be to let things go if the issue remains unresolved. If you must interact with a difficult person, learning calming techniques can be beneficial. Communicating your feelings in a constructive way can improve understanding instead of escalating the conflict. Be using avoidance as a strategy. Some of your angry reactions might stem from predictable triggers. For instance, if your kids refuse to do their homework or if your partner asks you accusatory questions, those scenarios are bound to provoke a response. Uh, choosing to avoid encounters during predictable moments of frustration can set you up to handle the situation more effectively later. While avoidance may lead to feelings of guilt or tension, the trade-off can prevent immediate frustration. It's not a complete solution and may even exacerbate the problem if you don't eventually address it. However, it does allow you some time to cultivate effective anger management techniques. Sometimes merely stepping back can serve as a valuable initial measure to deal with pressing issues. If you can pinpoint situations that trigger your anger, you can learn to navigate around them. For example, if you get upset when you find your children's toys scattered around, connect with your partner or a nanny to sort it out before leaving for work. Nearly everyone could benefit from avoiding a gathering where an angry outburst might occur, even if the specific examples don't resonate with you, steering clear of potential conflicts is often wiser than confronting them head-on. Take a moment to think about the situations that stressed you out in the past and find ways to manage them without confrontation. Assume you're feeling betrayed because someone asked you to do something. Driving a friend to a root canal appointment and serving on a religious organization's board of directors are examples. It's possible to watch a neighbor's pet while she's on vacation. Can I get back to you in a day or two? You can generally tell in these cases. The time delay allows you to regain your composure, weigh more options, and formulate a calmer and more rational response than you would if you responded on the spot. Classroom teacher might say something. Want to think about what you're saying until tomorrow. When a disruptive student expresses a strong opinion that isn't important to the lesson at hand, then I'll get back to you. When an offensive reporter asks a politician's press secretary an awkward question, the press secretary may respond, uh, I'll check on that for you. 
quick pause will calm an argument. Indirect response avoidance. Any people believe that they need to face, to face react to a challenging situation. By not reacting explicitly and in the moment, it is possible to react more creatively. Instead of interacting in person with a situation that is likely to make you angry, it's possible to avoid direct communication with your co-worker by sending a respectful email or memo. If your spouse or partner makes you angry at breakfast, if you want to communicate your thoughts better, send a text from work. If you replied in the heat of the moment, uh, a text can be angry, impulsive and destructive. It should not be sent until your anger has subsided. The technique of escape. Some cases are unavoidable. You can be called upon to lead a meeting, attend a family party, or attend your child's game. It's a good idea to think about how you can get away from it if you start to feel frustrated. Take a break. It's better to walk away from a fight. As your frustration grows, Continued discussion can become useless and even harmful. We'll call you back tonight. We will respond tomorrow if I call you in 20 minutes. Conflict timeout requires deliberate action on your part. Leaving a situation as your frustration escalates can be a good way to break the cycle and gain power. The idea is to find a situation in which you usually get upset with someone and end up in an argument. Go for a walk to calm down and then practice running away once you've realized you've become angry. Teaching people how to use time outs effectively requires them to follow the three steps below. These measures will break your negative commenting habit. It will give you a sense of achievement as well as better self-control. If you get upset during a discussion, when you say something derogatory, pay attention. That will prompt you to step away from the discussion calmly. Simply leave. It can take some practice to put an end to an angry discussion. Pay attention to your anger and practice walking away from more situations. Don't say anything when you are frustrated. Just leave. The exit should be improved to make them more elegant. Tell the other individual that you're getting upset. That you're about to quit it. And that you'd like and try to settle the problem at a later time until you leave the discussion. You need to make an attempt at a resolution at this stage. A.K.A. your plan to quit. It can be difficult to get up and leave when you are there. But if you knew ahead of time that dealing with a certain person would make you angry, would you set a time limit for how much time you spent with him or her? Why waste time and resources on a pointless debate? It's still ineffective. I'm glad we can talk about this. If you know you're going to have a difficult conversation, mention up front that you're short of time. Only have half an hour before I have to see a client. This isn't saying that you can tell a lie. It means you can arrange your schedule in such a way that you don't have to worry about time limits. Another option is to have someone help you out of a situation that will cause you to become angry. You can ask your assistant to interrupt a meeting after 30 minutes to inform you of your next appointment. To successfully use the practice of escape, you must first foresee circumstances in which you are likely to become angry and then devise a strategy for a quick exit. It's a good idea to engage in a pleasurable activity. Thinking about an issue over and over will make you angry, and it generally doesn't lead to a successful solution. So, there's a place for diversion. It's true that burying your head in the sand would increase your frustration, and some things can get worse over time. Distracting yourself can be beneficial in the short term. What does it mean to be distracted? It simply means losing yourself in an enjoyable activity. You can take a family member to a bowling alley, a baseball game, a movie, or a restaurant after work, or you can call an old friend. When you're distracted, it's important not to address the anger-related situation. If angry thoughts arise during a leisure activity, allow them to pass and then pay attention to the task at hand. The goal is to stop obsessing about what made you upset in the first place. You focus on more optimistic thinking and enjoyable hobbies. 
It is possible to achieve more harmony in your life by devoting time to things that you enjoy. Putting it all together is avoidance and invasion. Is there a way to use intentional avoidance? Is there a risk of a delay? Can you come up with a way to answer in a roundabout way? It is a stopgap measure to keep you away from a problem until a sustainable solution can be found. If you have to do anything this week that irritates you, then you can't stop? Is it possible for you to take a break from this obligation? If that is the case, consider the three steps to a successful timeout. Do you have a plan to get away? A B after the crisis is over, you can have a pleasurable diversion. Escape is just a stopgap measure on the road to a more long-term strategy for dealing with frustration. Uh...